Tonight, a dry July, with EP farmers now pinning their hopes on some decent August rainfall. And a whale of a time off Port Lincoln as the season starts to ramp up. This is Southern Cross News with Tim Hatfield. Good evening. The driest July in 18 years has Air Peninsula farmers worried their season could potentially be a write-off. Despite the forecast for this week, South Australia's overall lack of rain might impact not just only farmers, but the entire state's economy. Winter is not yet over, but clouds of uncertainty hover over Air Peninsula farmers. In 30 years of farming, I've never seen a season like this. Uh, firstly, I've never seen a, such a late dry start. And, and secondly, I have never seen my crops uh, develop three stages like they have. Farmers like Mark Modra, hoping the final month of winter doesn't continue to dampen their season, but does dampen their properties. If we get an average finish, uh, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. Many Air Peninsula farmers recorded bumper yields in recent years. Last season alone produced 9 million tonnes of grain exports from the region. Farmers relying on the area to save them from ruin. North Shields and particularly Cummins are seen as very reliable areas in, in, in South Australia and if not Australia. We always, well we never miss out and hopefully that'll be the case this year. But it's been a season unlike any before. Sporadic rain has led to crops growing at different stages. Farms accustomed to managing one area now working around the clock to produce a reasonable yield. We need to have a crop at the right stage. And if you've got these three different stages, we're going to have difficulty managing our weeds and our crop conditions. Some relief might be on the way. The forecast for August is promising, with rain scheduled throughout the month. Farmers optimistic about their future. While we might have a really poor season this year, we will still be there for in many years to go. And uh, not just from the economic flow-on effects, but also from the flow-on effects with jobs and the community input. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Primary school students in Port Augusta found a container of needles on school grounds recently, renewing calls for residents to take appropriate action around sharps. The Port Augusta Council says there's been no increase in syringe findings, but they do advise residents to get in touch if they locate any. Concerns over needle disposal have been raised after students from a Port Augusta primary school found a container of needles on their oval. Yet the Port Augusta Council says they haven't received any other reports in the last six months. We have actually looked at the last six months and we have found no reports in the last six months. I'm not saying that there is no issue, but certainly no one's reported anything in the last six months in terms of needles being found. While some residents have raised their concerns online, Mayor Johnson says they should first contact the council. I really strongly encourage it that when these instances are found, particularly in public locations, the best thing is to, to notify the council give us a call and let us know about it because it's very hard for us to act and be proactive and actually more importantly get rid of the problem. While syringes are used for medical conditions, some are often the result of drug use. Those who need access to sterile needles and disposable containers are advised to contact the Substance Misuse Centre here in Port Augusta. There's people that do take advantage of that facility there as well and we do encourage if you want to exchange them, please go and do it. It's anonymous and it's free of charge, so go and do it and exchange them and do it in a safe happy environment. If you do find a syringe in a public space, call the Needle Cleanup Hotline on 1300 13 13 40. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. The El Shabi and Oaks Road Junction will be upgraded later this year to improve safety. Port Perry Council says the upgrade will complement the redevelopment of George's Corner and reduce the chances of car accidents. Changing what used to be a stop sign to a give way sign has not changed drivers' behaviour when they're behind the wheel. And with Oaks Road the main connector to Napperby, drivers can expect heavy delays while workers widen the road and build a slip lane for traffic turning left. The most cost effective uh, solution that meets the community needs is the development of a slip lane which will um, make turning left or travelling um, west into Port Perry um, more convenient. During the redevelopment phase, the speed limit will be reduced to 25 kilometres an hour, but drivers will still be able to access Oaks Road through the T-junction. But there will be traffic control on site, um, so people will still be able to use the intersection, but they'll just have to um, be mindful of the works and just uh, might take, may take them a little bit longer. 
The Transport Department recommended the slip lane layout for the Nelshabin Oaks Road Junction, complementing the development of George's Corner. BTI to do ours so that so the works were complementary and that we hope that we can um, uh, carry out the improvements between um, the intersection here and George's Corner as per the road safety audits. Council says the upgrade is a preventative measure as there have been no major accidents occurring, just plenty of near misses. The upgrade of the junction is set to begin later this year. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Police have caught a high-range drink driver in Port Augusta with a woman caught drink driving almost six times above the legal limit. Police stopped the car on Foster Street on Sunday afternoon and breath tested the driver who blew a reading of 0.324. After police checks, the woman was also found to be driving without a licence. She's been reported for drink driving and will face the Port Augusta Magistrates Court at a later date. Well, stay with us. Still to come in tonight's local news, a whale of a time off Port Lincoln as the whale sighting season starts to ramp up. The details ahead. Welcome back. A man from Napperby is said to face court on drugs charges. Police caught up with the man at his home after spotting him driving an unregistered and uninsured car. A search of the house found eight large cannabis plants being grown hydroponically, plus 200 grams of a substance believed to be methamphetamine. The 33-year-old was arrested and will front court next month. Mining company Carpentaria has released its pre-feasibility study into their major iron ore project near Broken Hill. The Horsens Iron Project will create over a thousand jobs for the region and be a global leader in the international iron ore market. The big bosses at Carpentaria are getting excited for what lies ahead at the Horsens project. We released our pre-feasibility study results on Friday and they were highly encouraging. Uh, we've delivered on what we said we would. The pre-feasibility study revealed the project has a net present value of around $1.4 billion. Carpentaria will be producing its super-grade product, which has already attracted plenty of interest from buyers in the Middle East and Asia. Horson is now the leading high-quality iron ore project in the world. It means that they can offset the falling grades with a high-quality product that can be incentivised, can be profitable at the long-term iron ore price. Again, we are the leading high-quality iron ore project in the world now. The study also revealed some exciting news for employment in the region and into Port Piri. Around 1,200 jobs will be created during the construction phase and around 600 jobs during the operation phase. And Mr Hill says the project will have a very long lifespan. We know it's a very large resource, so we're talking decades. Our financial model studied 20 years, but we know there's uh, more than double that in the area, so we would be expecting it to go for decades. Carpentaria is seeking to be in production by 2020 and have the first shipment to Asia before the Tokyo Olympics. They're now seeking additional funding for a feasibility study. Uh, there's still a long way to go. Uh, but we expect to be able to get further funding uh, from our off-takers and from uh, the wider steel industry to get this project into production. Patrick Roenke, Southern Cross News. Elliston on the Air Peninsula will receive a big boost to its telecommunications network, upgrading its coverage to 4G. $1.3 million in funding will help increase Telstra's capabilities to the west of the state. It's the network that's been buffering for years triggering chaos in the local community. We've had instances where the hospitals had no phones at all for six hours, landline and mobile, when there might have been ten children, only two could get online to do their studies. But now Elliston will finally be brought up to speed, the government acknowledging its residents have been left in the dark for too long. This region was being really held back by a lack of access to reliable landlines and also to those mobile phone services. The small west coast region will receive a giant signal boost, the federal government kicking in over a million dollars for the high speed service. Customers' uh, use of data has has doubled every every year for the last five or six years. So this is really important for a, n a range of services and products. Elliston has a population under 500 people, but the small town has become a big tourism draw card, their network unable to keep up with summer demand. We know that in uh, the holiday season, tourism swells in Elliston, 
and uh, and people come and use their tablets and their mobile devices. The upgrade is expected to take six to 12 months to install, but will give local businesses the ability to operate in line with the rest of the country. Jason Kemp, Southern Cross News. Port Lincoln residents have been greeted with a spectacular sight, a southern right whale making its way into Boston Bay. The whales are known to visit the area during June and July, but locals were treated to a special encounter with one whale breaching within metres of the town's wharf. In recent weeks, there have been a number of southern right spotted off the west coast. Experts believe the pods come in close to feed during this time of year before heading back out into the cooler waters. The SA Arid Lands Board is set to hold its second retreat for women in the rural and remote arid lands region. Organisers say it's an opportunity for personal development and to celebrate their contribution to the rangelands environment. A networking and development event for women in the most remote parts of the state. The SA Arid Lands Women's Conference inviting women back to the retreat after its successful debut in 2015. Women really are a lot of the drivers in our in our communities. They're, they you know they form our backbone. They're innovative. They're business women on their property. So they're sort of they're involved in so much of our community that we thought they needed some time out as well to self development, learning about new technologies and just time for them really. In just a few weeks the event will be held in Woomera for women to celebrate their work and relax. It's really the sort of the idea of women in our region across cattle and sheep stations to get together and create an event that's purely for women who are living in remote and regional communities to come together to network, to share ideas, to learn new things and to have a bit of pampering as well. Business diversification, weather forecasting for pastoral management and entrepreneurial confidence are all top on the agenda and anyone interested or living in the Arid Lands region is invited. So it's available to all women uh, in the Arid Lands region but we do extend that invite to any other women who really want to take that time out to get away for the weekend, get up to Woomera, maybe they've never been before um, and experience them what the uh, natural resources SA Arid Lands have to offer. So The retreat will take place from the 18th to the 20th this month. Amelia Simpson, Southern Cross News. Well, stay with us when we return after the break. Port Perry school students pushing for a world of change as part of a foreign exchange. The details ahead. <laughs> Welcome back. Broken Hill Councillor Marion Brown received a special award at the recent New South Wales Labor Party conference. She was awarded an ALP New South Wales Life Membership honour at the conference, which was held in Sydney over the weekend. Marion's been a Broken Hill Councillor since 1983 and has been a tireless volunteer for the community as well. Students from St Mark's in Port Pirie went on an immersion trip to the Philippines over the school holidays, lending a helping hand to five underprivileged schools and a university, and also raising money to improve conditions. Jetting off to the Philippines for two weeks, students from St Mark's worked closely with the underprivileged to improve their standard of living. And with the help from the Port Puri community, students raised over $10,000. Seeing firsthand myself the uh, schools and their conditions and what they have to live in, it's, I definitely know that that money's going to a great place and they're going to be getting rainwater tanks, supplies, lots of things to help out and to make their lives a little bit easier. And the plan for some of the funding is to go towards rebuilding communities affected by natural disasters. Um, help to rebuild homes for those that lost theirs in the typhoon and also those that are homeless. Um, and so part of our fundraising hopes to be able to build a home for families that go without. The immersion is run biannually and encourages students to engage in the Filipino culture through dance and song. It was just an amazing experience and it helped me to understand how important the opportunities we get are. Um, the Filipino people aren't given that many opportunities and they're just so grateful for everything they get. And the students spoke and taught basic English at the schools while participating in other educational activities. Rachel Nell, Southern Cross News. Turning to local sport now, and there was plenty of netball action happening around the golf over the past week and a bit of soccer as well. Patrick Ronke joins us now. And Pat, there was a top-of-the-table clash on the netball courts in Wyala. Yes, Tim, it was first versus second in Saturday's game between the Warriors and YCW. The Warriors came into the game as favourites with just the one loss so far this season. With the best attack and best defence in the competition, the Warriors reigned supreme over YCW, winning by 21 goals. 
In the second game, Kiwi handed Rupina their 10th straight loss, beating them by 15 goals. Heading into Port Pirie and just like the weekend footy, Solomon Town were far too good for Port. Central Risdon's Elise Lynch was the A1 player of the week for her cracking performance in her side's 27-goal win over Celtic. There was just the one game in Port Augusta and it was St Joe's knocking over the Magpies. And down in Port Lincoln, the A-grade's top three teams all had wins. Way back down Boston, South United blitzed St Mary's and Wanilla bested Imperial. Only four points separates way back Souths and Wanilla at the top of the table. To Broken Hill Soccer and St Joe's edged out Celtic and Western Alma had a very close contest. The game was so close neither team could score. At the end of the 90, it was a scoreless draw. Goals to Matt Musket and Pat Nash gave St Joe's a vital win over the green and white. In Port Lincoln, it was big wins for Lincoln City Raiders and Seacole Masters. Lane Pennington scored a hat-trick for Lincoln City as they thumped South Coast and Hakan Turkman also got three in the back of the net as his side outplayed Lincoln Knights. In the SA Amateur League, Savoy couldn't do enough to defeat Angle Vale and in the MPL State League 2, the Northern Demons claimed a ripping 1-0 victory over Eastern United. So Tim, plenty of netball and soccer action happening right now and there's still plenty more to come. And if you want your sporting results on Southern Cross News, send them through to localsport at sca.com.au. All right, thanks very much, Pat. Well, stay with us after the break. I'll look at the local weather, and there is some rain on the way. Welcome back. Turning to the weather now on a sunny day across the board for today. 20 in Port Augusta and 18 in Wyala. Port Pirie and Port Lincoln both 17 today, 17 also in Broken Hill. On the national satellite, we can see a low pushing in from the west. It's set to bring some heavy cloud with showers over the next few days. Out on the waters, the winds to 20 knots to the east tomorrow. The seas to a metre and a half in southerly. Sun rises at 12 minutes past seven. So tomorrow we're in for a very rainy day with a big wet pushing across. Just 14 degrees is the temperature. Temperature drops for Port Augusta and Wyala, the same in Port Perry. Port Lincoln showers at 15, rain and 17 in Broken Hill. And then looking at the rest of the week, this wet weather is set to linger right into the weekend at this stage. 16, then 17 for Thursday and Friday in Port Lincoln. Clay 15, then 16 and wet and windy to wrap up the week. Woodner 16, then 17. Wyala with showers and 16 for Thursday with rain around and a top of 18 degrees to wrap up the week. Port Augusta 16 then 18, Kadena 15 on Thursday and then 16 degrees expected on Friday. Port Piri looking at 15 then rain and 16 for Friday. Clare showers and 12 then rain and 13. Broken Hill just 13 degrees with, with that rain about on Thursday. Though the Silver City will see it clear off to a fine 15 degrees on Friday. And that is the local news for this Tuesday. Don't forget, as always, you can stay up to date with us online and you can also drop us an email if you'd like to get in touch. We'll see you back here tomorrow night from 6.30. I'm Tim Hatfield from the Southern Cross News team. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs>